everybody. Matt O'Ree back here with you. Once again, welcome back to Mob on TV, the official Matt O'Ree Band YouTube channel. If you haven't clicked subscribe, please do so. Also, don't forget to smash that little bell icon so you'll get emails every time I upload new videos. Now, I've been getting emails lately of where the heck have I been. I've been recording and performing and touring and just been busy, and I'm sorry I haven't been on my channel much uh, posting up new videos. But not to fear, we're back to every Wednesday for a while, as long as my schedule permits. So, uh, I've been wanting to do this thing called Tech Talk, which is a little video mini-series of some different things like what kind of strings I use, how I string the guitar, how I set the guitar up, maybe some tubes, pedal boards, uh, all that kind of little ins and outs of uh, things and tricks of the trade that I've learned over the years. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. Here's episode number one. So today we're talking about what's in your gig bag or your gig case, I guess if you want to call it that, your daily bag or case that you're bringing to every show um, and all the things that I've amassed over the years of what is a good thing to carry with you, what you don't need to carry with you. So shown here is my Pelican uh, 1510 case, uh, great cases. Very, very sturdy. They're supposed to be watertight, um, uh, at least water resistant, which is great, better than a gym bag. And gym bags don't last all that long and zippers break, and you know, that's usually the way that goes. So I do recommend a case, but um, the Pelican is great. I have no problems, no complaints with it. Uh, it's just, uh, they're not cheap, but they're going to last you for a long time. The great part about the Pelican is that this particular size is also a carry-on size, so you can put it in the overhead. So you could use it for just laundry if you were traveling someplace. Um, so it, it serves a lot of uh, double-duty purposes. So let's take a look inside. I do have a, a lid organizer in this case, but um, let's start with just the bottom of it. So things that I definitely think that you should have on every gig, uh, very important stuff, uh, including just sitting on top is just a pair of good old work gloves. How many times have you been loading the car or unloading the car into a gig and you nick your finger or or something worse, hopefully not, but um, it's always good to have a pair of gloves. Now, ironically, the gloves are in the case, but uh, I do use them to load gear uh, a bunch, so let's get that out of the way. Uh, next up, pretty obvious, is a couple of rolls, a couple of different colors of gaffer's tape. Gaffer's tape is different than uh, duct tape, and you never want to use duct tape. I don't recommend that at all. Duct tape uh, leaves a, a heavy, sticky residue. It's not really designed to go with guitar cables or audio cables. But gaffer tape is. Gaffer tape is more of a cloth-style tape. It does not leave a sticky residue at all, so you can use it to tape cables to the side of an amplifier or on stage, and uh, the uh, people that own the stage are going to be very happy that you're using gaffer's tape. Not cheap. I think a roll of gaffer's tape is probably 10 bucks or 12 bucks or something like that, maybe more. Um, but they are very, very useful. So I got a couple colors I usually bring with me. I also use these to, to mark cables as well for directionality. Um, I discussed that a little bit further into the pedal board episode, which is coming. Of uh, I definitely have noticed the difference of which way you plug your cables into. So, meaning that there is a direction to the cable in terms of optimizing your tone. Uh, there's going to be more about that in, uh, I think it's episode 5 of the pedal boards, but I'll discuss it a little bit today. Okay, next up is something really, really important, and I think this brand is excellent. I've had really great results with it. It's a power strip from Triplight. And uh, this particular one, the ISO bar, is a metal box, which is great. So it's very sturdy. This has been, uh, I mean, it's gotten, you know, bent up a little bit on the bottom ears. But um, what's so great about this is that not only does it have surge protection, but it also has a diagnostic checker and will tell you if the ground is bad. So you should never really run your amp without ground. Uh, it's dangerous. Um, 
it usually causes ground loop hum noises and all kinds of stuff like that. So as soon as I get to the gig and I and I get to a, a power source, I plug this in instantly just to read that di diagnostic uh, digital uh, LED readout, excuse me, um, to make sure that the ground is good and the surge protection is working before I plug any amplifiers into this at all. It's a really helpful thing. Uh, I definitely suggest it. They're not that much money. I think on Amazon, I think this was 60 bucks or something like that. They have ones that have, I think, eight now, and they also have six, and they have four outlets, you know, two uh, per box. Okay, so the next obvious thing coming up is my George L cable. I am an endorser of George L. Uh, absolutely love their cable. I got turned on to them by Eric Johnson many years ago, and uh, I've been using their cable ever since. They have two different size cables. They have 255 cable, which is a thicker jacket. And then they also have 155 cable. The 155 cable I talk about, again, a bunch in episode number 5 coming up in pedal boards because the thinner cable is a little bit easier to wire a pedal board with. But I usually use the 255 cable because uh, when I'm on stage, so this is going from my guitar to my pedal board, uh, if I happen to be stepping on the cable, I can feel this thickness under my foot uh, much easier than the thinner cable. So I'll know if I'm stepping on the cable or not, and and just so I don't accidentally yank on it and have it, you know, uh, come unplugged somewhere. In the 255 cable, you'll notice on my cable, one end is what's called an unplated brass end, which I really love the sound of them. The other end is not only marked for direction, so this is the start of my signal flow. In this case, I used bright green uh, gaffer's tape. But on this other end of the cable, I soldered and wired a uh, Neutrix uh, silent plug. So this has a little tiny collar, if you can see that in the video here, that pops out. So when I unplug the guitar, that collar pops out and it, shut, it shorts out the end of the cable. So that way, changing guitars is, is silent and it's also uh, better for your amplifier to not have all that noise happening from an open cable. Uh, these are really great. I haven't had any issues with them at all. I did buy a bunch for backup and haven't had to use them, and I've been using the same cable, I believe, for almost 10 years now. So, of course, I always have a backup for the cable, so I got another cable. This one's a little bit shorter, just depending on the uh, the length that I, I need to run from the guitar to the pedal board, depending on the size of the stage. So I have two of those. Then I have a bunch of 155 cable that I'll run out of my pedal board. Uh, in my pedal board episode, I also talk about a snake cable, and I made the snake cable out of this 155 cable. So I just have a bunch of these, just loose, so a short one, uh, about the same size as that blue one, as a red one, uh, a black one. And they're, they're all just different colors, just so I have I can have backups of my backups, and depending on the gig, if I'm just doing an acoustic gig, I got plenty of extra cables with me. And because of the 155, they don't take up a whole lot of room in this in this case because they're so thin. Uh, don't let the thin cable fool, fool you. The tone of them is fantastic. And the reliability, this longer cable, I think it's 22 feet. Um, this one I have been using for f almost 15 years. So even though they say that you know the ends in the George L cable are solderless, meaning that you put the cable on, you tighten the set screw, it makes the connection, and that's it. So I know some people say, well, if you didn't solder it, it's not going to last long. Uh, I guess I beg to differ because this one, again, is almost 15 years old. So um, yes, I guess they can't, you know, any cable can go bad, but easy enough to fix the George L. You just pop this off, uh, put the end, you know, cut a little piece of the wire off, put it back on, tighten the screw, and you're back in business. Okay, next up in my gig bag is speaker cable. So again, with cable, I talked about the direction of the cable, and it does make a difference in tone. It's not night and day, but I'm always trying to optimize this, my tone to be even better and better for more clarity. So on one side, you'll see that I marked the end of it. This plugs into the amplifier. This plugs into the speaker cable. This is also... Uh, George L's uh, speaker cable. It looks like an old lamp cord type of type of wire, and it sounds really great with my train wreck amps. So I usually gig with that, and of course I have a backup for that, just just in case one goes bad, or maybe I'm running two heads and two cabinets. I have two cables with me. Okay, well next up is 
uh, just some uh, XLR to balance quarter inch cables. We use this with our in-ear rig sometimes. So I just have that in there as well as some extra XLR microphone cables. So again, going to a gig that might be a solo acoustic gig or a duo acoustic gig. I have a pair of microphone cables just in case one goes bad. I have a backup or I have one for the microphone and I have one for my acoustic DI, which is in this box right here, which we'll get to in just a second. So always have a pair of microphone cables with me. Then next up, I have just a just a regular old Home Depot or Lowe's um, style uh, extension cord. Always good to have that hanging around because you never know when you might need it. Then is a, a spare. This is a spare power con cable. So this is one end is a regular Edison plug. The other side is a locking uh, power con jack. This is for my pedal board. Again, back to the pedal board episode that's coming up. My pedal board, uh, this is how it's powered. It has a locking jack, so when I plug the pedal board in, if somebody trips on the cable, chances are this, is, this, this won't come out. It'll come out of the wall before it comes out of the pedal board. So I have an extra... Uh, extra cable in my uh, in my gig ba box or gig bag, uh, just just in case one does break. And I think last in the cable selection is just an extra uh, IEC connect uh, cable. This is just standard uh, power cable for computers and such, but this also is used on a bunch of different uh, other devices like amplifiers and pedal boards and also PA equipment too. So having an extra one hanging around, you never know when you might need one of these and you know, the, the nice thing about IECs is that you can pretty much get them at any uh, convenience store if you have to, but uh, it's always good to have one hanging around. Okay, so the DI I talked about, I really love LR Bags as a company, uh, also endorsed by them, and their Para Acoustic DI is an absolute must. Fantastic DI. Every time I show up to a gig, every sound guy sees it and, is, and says, oh great, you got to you got a great DI, so um, it sounds great with my acoustics. Uh, it's just a fantastic box. The, bo the uh, box itself has seen better days, but it stays right over here. Uh, I always have an extra tuner, and this is my Sonic Research Turbo Tuner. I talk a lot more about this in my pedal episode again, because this is on my pedal board, but this is a loose one. So again, if I'm doing an acoustic gig, I grab this box, I grab a mic stand, I grab my acoustic guitar, and off to the gig I go. I got these old little camera um, cases years ago. I used to work at a Photoshop years ago, but uh, they worked really well for, uh, for just storing some pedals in it. Uh, last up here in the pedal land is just an extra boost pedal. So if I go to sit in with somebody, uh, this is a, a, a prototype from Andy Fuchs. Um, called a creme pedal, and it's a it's sort of a uh, an over uh, it's an overdrive like tube screamer ish kind of thing, but Andy's version on it, and it's a really great sounding pedal. He made this years ago, and I fell in love with it for numerous reasons. It's got so much more gain on tap um, than a, t a standard tube screamer, and I love the fact that it was unfinished, no markings. It just looked like you know a homemade project kind of thing, which at the time it was. So. Uh, and he's like, oh, you got to give it back to me. I'll, I'll give you one of the, the production ones. And I said, no, 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 <laughs> let me keep this one because this one is exactly what, you know, what I wanted. And uh, I just love the sound of it. So I keep it in my bag, again, just in case I'm going to go sit in with somebody. Uh, I don't know what amps are going to be there. So I have this with me at, at all times. Uh, grab my, my cable box and my guitar. I go sit in. I always have something with me that can get me some tones that I'm comfortable with. And again, in the old camera case. Okay, so there is another cable down there, which is for my bigger rig. It's not really that important. It's nothing that you guys out there need. It's a, it's another plug with a quick disconnect. Uh, I made this a long time ago because my Echoplex that I use, 70s Echoplex, I converted the power cord on the, on the Echoplex to be this quick disconnect because the Echoplex is stored and mounted in a rack draw in my bigger rig, but if I ever have to take the Echoplex out and use it on its own outside of the rig, I can plug this cord into it and then I can then plug the thing into the wall and get it to work. So this is just an extra um, extra cord that I had made years ago. Okay, some other things that are really handy. These are little uh, pick holders for your mic stand. They slip onto the mic stand, picks slip in this side, 
and then you have some extra picks at your ready in case you happen to drop one. Um, I have an iPad stand, which is really useful because nowadays everybody pretty much operates off of iPads for lyrics and charts, and this one just screws onto a mic stand and it holds my ginormous iPad because I probably need glasses at this point. Um, last in here, almost last in here. Well, let's go to this. These are a pair of microphones that I use for vocals. This is a Telefunken M80. It's an excellent, excellent sounding microphone. I have a pair of them, again, as a backup, or sometimes if my wife is singing, she'll sing through one. But uh, they're excellent, excellent microphones. They sound so good. Love the Telefunken stuff. They're just an excellent company. I do have an extra SM57 in here, too. So if I, again, I'm on the fly, I got my gig box, I have my amp and cabinet, and I need a microphone to mic it with that sounds good with my head. So I'll use this sometimes, and I'll also use it with this. This is a from Audix. This is called a cab grabber. So this actually is spring-loaded, and it clip and it, it uh, clips onto the side of the cabinet, and then the microphone is now facing directly at the speaker. So if this was the side of the cabinet, it would go bloop and clip on, and then now I put the microphone in here, and it's an easier. Uh, it takes up less room on stage. There's, a, there's no footprint of a microphone stand by my cabinet, so it, it works re works really well. Okay, so now we're on the lid organizer, which is a pretty cool and handy thing. Um, I had one complaint about it, and this one, the zipper, didn't last very long, but, uh, the other pouches seem to be holding up pretty good, and, you know, at least I have some kind of organization for these little doodads and knickknacks. Uh, let's start with the top left one. So this is pretty much just filled with extra guitar picks and extra guitar strings. Of course, always good to have that hanging around, uh... You never know when you're going to need them <laughs> in an emergency. Uh, let's move over to this one, too. This has a lot of stuff in it. Uh, a bunch of different uh, packages of 9-volt batteries. Of course, they're always important to have, especially when you have loose pedals like that. Uh, sometimes you might be at a gig and all the stores are closed and you need a 9-volt. So it's always good to have some extra hanging around. I have some electrical tape in here. Um, I have a Leatherman, which is always good to have a multi-tool. Um, these little guys are really good to have hanging around, too. This is a ground lift adapter. Every once in a while, you might need one of those to quiet something down. It might not be the amplifier. It might be a, a pedal. It might be a, a wall ward adapter or whatever. Um, there's just good things to have hanging around. Uh, also have uh, packages of uh, fuses for my amplifier. So whichever amp you have, it's always important to have fuses with you because fuses can blow. And even though uh, there might not be anything wrong with the amplifier, it could be just a fluke, but it is important that you have extra fuses for your amplifier. Okay, so in this pouch, I have a device that I made myself. Now, you could buy these, on, again, on Amazon. This is just a, a box that has a digital readout. I could plug this into the wall, and it'll tell me what the voltage is at the wall. Um, again, you can get any of these kind of devices on Amazon along with that trip light uh, power strip. The trip light you know, tells you if there's a ground problem, but it doesn't tell you what the actual voltage is coming out of the wall. So I just have this little handy gadget. They actually make another thing, too, that you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's just like a plug-in, but it has LED lights on it. And there's a series of them, and then there's also a little chart on the plug. And you plug this end into the wall, and whatever lights come up, you look at the chart, and it'll tell you what's wrong if there's anything wrong with the electrical outlet. Not a bad thing to have hanging around either. Uh, down here I just have a little, an extra knife, uh, one of these little clip-on lights which is really handy to, at night time or backstage I can clip it on here and I can, I can see what's going on even though the battery's dead. Okay, put that aside for a minute. Um, next little compartment I have a couple of little foot switches. One is an AB foot switch. So I use this every once in a while and it does come in handy. So input 
and then output and output and of course the switch will change from one to the other it's just a simple passive a b switch it looks a lot like the ones that eric johnson uses on his pedal board it's made in the same exact box that his were made from um i'll use this you know pretty frequently on gigs maybe to switch over from an acoustic to an electric if, if i'm not using my pedal board um, they're just really handy to have hanging around and the other one is just a single jack on it this is just an on off switch a simple on off switch that I can use with my Leslie cabinet to turn fast to slow I can use it with my amplifier to turn my uh, train wreck uh, rocket I can turn the tremolo on and off so they're, they're just good to have hanging around for sure okay the last one where the zipper broke uh, always good to have a flashlight absolutely very very important to have that um, an extra sharpie not a bad thing extra screwdriver with some screwdriver bits in the end of it always good and it's nice that this is ratcheting that does help sometimes when you're in a hurry uh, especially if you're trying to change the batteries in a pedal um, being able to you know to make that happen faster some more batteries again last but not least what's in my gig bag I always carry one of these two this is an, an uh, RCA to an eighth inch plug so if you ever need to plug your phone into a PA system to spin some music in between sets this is definitely going to be your friend so I hope you guys got something out of this video uh, some stuff that I carry with me all the time uh, there's also I have another tech box that I have more strings and I have tubes and I have tools in it too uh, but this is my daily gig bag gig box that I go to every single show with so thanks for watching so there we have it, folks. Episode number one of my new mini-series called Tech Talk. What's in your gig bag? Tune in next week. We're going to be talking about strings, string brands, string gauge sizes, uh, tuners, all kinds of stuff like that. Remember, go to my website, mattoreband.com. Hey, we have a ton of tour dates coming up this year. If we're in your town, please stop out and say hello. You'll find all that info on our website. Plus, we have a whole new merchandise line of hats, T-shirts, thermoses, coffee mugs, all kinds of stuff. Check it all out, mattoreband.com. Any questions, always feel free to email me at info at Don't worry, the Gear Tutorial series will return this spring to season number three. But right now we're on Tech Talk. Hope you're getting some info out of this, and we're going to see you next week. Thanks. Yeah.